Good evening. Uh, um, I'd like to talk to you just for a, a short while about something I've, I've been studying and uh, through the help of my brother Aaron. Um, I would like to talk to you about the Palestinian Covenant, kind of give you an outline of uh, what it is, what is the nature of the covenant, the fulfillment of the covenant, and just a brief summary of the covenant. All right, the book of Deuteronomy lets us see God's plan concerning Israel and the anticipation of, of the possession of the land by Israel. You can also, if you go back, you can kind of read it in Numbers 34. It kind of mirrors these chapters of, you know, chapters 28 through 30 about what God's plan is. As one thing you kind of noticed about the Bible is God is a very organized mm -hmm. God because mm -hmm. he tells you what I'm going to do then he does what he goes to do and then he tells you what I did do which is very organized so when you can see that so Israel was journeying through the wilderness on the east side of the Dead Sea and they were in anticipation of possessing the land they hadn't possessed the land but they knew through God's servant Moses, that they were getting close to possess the land. Now it's really important to look at the emphasis that the writer is putting in this book. And you know, 69 times the writer in Deuteronomy repeats God's pledge that Israel would one day possess the land, to inherit it, that land which they were promised from when? Abraham. Mm. The Lord made clear though, when they went into these lands and, and, and the conditions that he would require for them in his covenant, even though the Abrahamic covenant was an unconditional covenant, but he did put conditions on them when they were going into this land. And he told them and he warned them that they need to be obedient to receive his blessing. And this talks about in Genesis, I'm sorry, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 through 14, where God is laying out what is required of them when they take this land and what he what he is demanding that they do in return to give him honor and glory because they were his representatives on earth and if they see the next the children of israel prospering and being blessed then that would point other people that was around them to focus and say israel is serving the true god mm -hmm. so they were representative they didn't realize it, but they were God's representative. To you know how you say that one person by how they live that life can affect many. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. that's what Israel was supposed to be for the other nations mm -hmm. around them. Mm -hmm. but they didn't mm -hmm. see that. Mm -hmm. That's good. They didn't see that. That's good. And, and and if they were disobedient, the judgment that they would receive and the curses they would receive, and they get that also in in Deuteronomy twenty eight verses fifteen through to sixty eight. It talks about. If they turn from him, that he would turn from them, and mm. then they would no longer be under his covering. And then that will, but when you read that, and you can go back, you see the Assyrians in 722 BC. They 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 they, they came and destroyed Israel. And they took the northern kingdom. Mm. There's just the southern kingdom is left. And then Babylon came and took both of the kingdoms and carried them away into captivity. Yeah. And that was in 586 BC. And there was there they were. No longer in a lot of just a remnant of the people were living in the land and they were living in, in, in bad condition because they was all so fearful. You remember Gideon, he would always be looking at he was in the wine, he was in the freshman field, he was in the pit, sashing out the wheat because he didn't want the Midianites to see what he was doing because he feared that they would come and take it from him. I, I know sometimes you, you, you forget about it, but that's you have to add those in. And then lastly, when Rome came in 70 AD. And we can read about that in Deuteronomy 28, verses 64. So even though throughout these tragedies and you know, catastrophes that Israel went, he still revealed to his people that, one, that once again, the possession of the land, their promise, they will get it. And he talks about that in, in Deuteronomy 30, verses 1 through 10. This is the point where Israel is kind of giving them a picture of what the millennium kingdom would look like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But they just didn't get it. At that time, but he but he was showing revelation in his millennium kingdom when Christ would come back as the Messiah and reign and show them. So let's kind of look at the nature of the covenant. Well, the nature of the past because of this, when you look at it, you really don't see it as a as a covenant in the Bible, but it is a covenant in the Bible. 
it's parts about the land, and of course the land was named Palestine. That's what makes it that Palestinian covenant. But a lot of people get get you know sidetracked with that. But the nation of Israel being removed from their land because of their unfaithfulness to God, because Deuteronomy 31 through 3 talks about, and then the future repentance of Israel, which again we see in 28, the Deuteronomy 28, 63 to 68. Then he talks about the, how the Messiah will return in Deuteronomy uh, 30 verses 3 through 6. And then, and, and then hopefully the restoration of Israel to the land of promise. And that is in Deuteronomy 30, chapter 30 verse 5. But it's, it, you can see also that Israel is being converted as a nation. When I mean converted, that means to say that when you allow people that are not like you to come in or don't believe what you believe, they become a cancer. And if you don't cut the cancer out, the body gets infected. Mm -hmm. And you know what happens when the body gets infected, right? It destroys the body. Mm -hmm. This is what happened to Israel. They stopped following God, stopped following people, the people of around them. The next thing you know, Israel is now cancerous. So mm -hmm. God has to deal with the cancer. And you know, anyone who's suffered cancer surgery, it's a painful surgery. Mm -hmm. God has got, you got to remove that cancer out so people are going to feel that pain. And then, and you know, you can kind of see that in Deuteronomy 30, verses 4 through 8, and again in Romans 11, 26, a type. And then you go to see what happens to the enemies of Israel and how God will judge them. And God talks about that in Deuteronomy 30, verse, in chapter, in verse 7, chapter 30. And he said, lastly, we talk about how Israel as a nation will receive the full blessings of God. But how will they receive that? Deuteronomy uh, 30 verse 9 talks about that. See, when we see how the Palestinian covenant is important for us as believers, it lets us understand why and how God has reaffirmed Israel's right to the land. This is a key point. As we see in today's world, how they bicker that Israel has no right to land, but this through the word, through the Bible, shows us that Israel has the title, has the deed, has the right to that land. And the land, this is their land of promise. It was never rescinded, even though there were certain conditions under the Mosaic Covenant that affected the Palestinian Covenant, but the Palestinian Covenant should be really, when we look at it, and it's why I look at it, it's kind of termed eternal because it's talking about the millennium. But there's the tie in there between them. And you find that in Ezekiel 16, uh, chapter 16, verse 60, because it's part of the unconditional Abraham covenant and it's amplified to the millennium covenant, which when Christ will come down and shall reign. So when we look at the fulfillment of it, and, and studying these chapters 28 through 30 in Deuteronomy, it shows God's for telling us of how Israel's apostasy, how they would be captured, their dispersion by the Assyrians, the Babylonians, and Rome, lastly Rome, prior to their reoccupation of the land. Mm. See, when you come back to we firstly we see God's fulfillment of a covenant that He had made to Abraham, and He said, I will make you a great nation, mm -hmm. and I will give you this land. Secondly, Israel receives the law of God in the wilderness from his servant Moses. So now God is setting the frameworks of the conditions of you going into the land. And lastly, the land is when they all, these three come together. They make their every coming be fulfilled. So Israel now is a nation who has a land, who has areas somewhere they can call home. But it's not the end of the story because it doesn't come. It's not complete. For us to be complete, we must be at a place of repentance and have the knowledge of the Messiah. This talks about in Zechariah 12, verses 10 through 14. We see today that the nation Israel returned to the land coming out of many nations as of the divided over a millennium. The realization of this is that once again through eschatology, the eventful fulfillment in the land is that Israel will appropriate the land prior to the millennium kingdom. And we see that as the bride of the forces that's coming against Israel, Israel is still standing firm because the hand of God is with it. So when we, we look at the back of this today, what we see is a type through the Old Testament of, of what is going to be the New Testament, the 
full millennial reign when Christ comes and, 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 and fulfills all that he has promised in the word of God. The Abraham covenant shows us God's promise to the father Abraham, which is added to the Mosaic covenant, which is the law, and lastly we see the nation of Israel grow. Each covenant builds one on another before. In the Mosaic covenant, we, they, we added worship, we added the revelation of God and how we should approach God, mm. the holiness of God. And through this, we can see God is holy and he's making a point to his people about his holiness. Mm -hmm. He cannot be approached without a mediator who is holy. His holiness demands that we must be moral and upright and teach and treat each other according to his word and in the love of God. It is imminent, it is eternal that he, that he cares for his people and dwells with them. So what he was showing right there is how we had the tent of the tabernacle, how the, we, we, the act sacrifice was supposed to go, and so it was a preparation for his son who would come and make the ultimate sacrifice, be the final sacrifice, who would be in front, be continually in front of the father. So it's complete, whereas the priest only went there once a year, but he's in front of the father every day, mm -hmm. eternally, so there is no separation. So that is what makes it a complete sacrifice and fulfillment we also see that blood is very important in the worship of the holy god blood is required as an amendment of sin without blood it is impossible to approach god the requirement of the mediator which is what the levitical priest is in the old testament points to the mediator which is christ jesus who once and for all will reconcile a sinful nature to a holy and true god israel was chosen by god to be a special people to himself who God could show his love and holiness to all to draw them to the knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. Thank you.